Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I keep inside of my Kali gear bag for Filipino martial arts sparring and training. Obviously, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, and click the bell so you can get informed whenever I release a new video. Previously, I released a video about what I keep in my normal sparring bag, and I thought it would make for an interesting video to look into the difference between my sparring bag and looking at what I have for gear for training in the Filipino martial arts. Once again, going into this video, I wanna make it clear I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm a small YouTube channel and I have a small school here in Indianapolis. So everything here is just kind of what are my preferences. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And first things first is this bag. This is the coolest bag I ever came across. It is specifically designed for Kali. It's a company called Kali Gear. They make perfect bags that uh, for training specifically Kali, all everything's basically designed for it. So let's first start off with going on the outside of my bag and then we'll work on the inside. There's a lot of ridiculous stuff in here that I think you guys might think are cool. First, I got all of this hanging off of my bag. So what is all this? Well, this is a sarong um, and we practice sarong in the Filipino martial arts. This can be used as something that wears across your body. This can be worn at almost like a dress. It's also used in some religious rituals and things like that. But in Filipino martial arts, this is actually a weapon. And a sparring with a sarong is super, super interesting. It really makes me uh, think a lot about how people's clothing can be used against them and how your clothing can be used against you. Um, so it's a fun little bit of Filipino martial arts that people oftentimes don't explore. The other thing that I just keep hanging from my bag at all times are some kind of sparring gloves. These are actually Kenpo gloves. They are the gloves that were like famously worn by Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon. But I actually find these are awesome for sparring Kali because they give you full grip over your stick and they cover your hands completely. They give you full wrist rotation. And uh, because they have all this padding on top, they can take the hits on the hands a little bit better. And it allows me to hit as well because they're soft. So these are actually sparring gloves. I also like them a lot because they are lace up. I've actually made, I don't know if I can show you this. I've actually made a little modification to mine where I have these little slide up things on the laces so that I can lace them myself. I don't need someone else to lace my gloves for me. So going into the bag, let's go to this pocket first. This is probably one of my more rarely used pockets and that is where I keep all of my blue guns. So uh, blue guns are basically weighted, accurate, um, replicas of guns or, or molds of guns. So this is uh, the shield and it's weighted and feels just like that gun would so that if you are doing any practice uh, in which you are either defending against a gun or using your gun, this allows for a nice, nice safe training process. And because they are weighted accurately, you really get the sense of the feel of the weapon. I see a lot of people do gun training or firearm training in self-defense where they are using rubber guns. And I and I understand that they like hurt less if they accidentally hit you, but you don't get a very realistic sense for how that gun feels. I keep three in here. I keep the uh, shield. I keep a, uh, a 1911 and I keep a, a Ruger LC9. So if I have a student who carries, I can let them come in with their holster and wear these in their holster um, and get a bit of training on their weapon. So moving on over to this pocket here, um, this is where I keep my, my cone of doom. Let me open this guy up. This is where I keep all of my training knives. So first is this thing, this cone that, this is actually something that goes around your wrist. It's a hard uh, uh, piece of material that goes all the way around your wrist so that you can actually train with metal knives and people can hit this and not do any damage to you. A must have for any coach who's teaching knife fighting because God knows it's, it, gets, it gets really exhausting constantly having people hit you too hard. This helps minimize that damage. I keep several different kinds of training knives. All of these are from the Anasanto Academy. Um, I train, I, I've trained with Dan Anasanto um, several times a year for, oh, I don't know, like five or six years now, maybe seven years. Um, 
and uh, I, I'm always picking up some training gear there. So I keep a couple different kinds in here. I'll pull these out. Let's see here. These are kind of the three that I keep. So first is just a nice long dagger. These are kind of my favorite. Next is a is a really large single edged blade. And finally is a smaller one for a slightly more realistic training. I also have these like rubber knives, but I don't like rubber knives because they don't give a realistic sense of disarms. There are certain disarms that like don't work against rubber because the rubber bends, but that would work against a piece of metal. And so you don't get a good sense of what it actually feels like to train against a metal knife unless you have metal. Um, I think most of these are available on Dan Alessanto's website. So if you're looking to get a hold of some really, really good training knives, um, these, are the, these are where you go. And then a little bit more fun in here is some nunchucks or nunchaku. Um, these are the ones from my childhood. When I was like 12, I got into nunchucks. Um, I know a little bit about them. And on a rare occasion, one of my students uh, gets it, uh, they decide that they also would like to learn some nunchucks. And I always get to surprise them and be like, guess what? I not only know nunchucks, I got some right here so we can work them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the inside of this bag. Just to give you a quick look at the inside of the bag so you can kind of see how it's set up. Um, so we're gonna go from this furthest pocket in. Um, once again, most of this gear is just stuff that comes from uh, the Anasanto Academy. Um, so if you're wondering like, where do I get those awesome swords? Wherever Dan Anasanto gets his stuff. Um, so I keep two of each, but I'm only gonna pull out one of each. So I keep the kind of like traditional, traditional just bolo, um, and then I keep a Chris. I actually had these made. Uh, so the guy who makes these, I got in contact with him and asked him to make me a pair of Chris. I think it's really hard to find a good Chris for training. Uh, Chris is the sword that has this waviness to it. It's hard to find a good Chris for training. Uh, most of them on the market are really cheap or too small. They're like itty bitty looking things. Um, and I wanted something that was, you know, more akin to what we had been training um, in Kali. And uh, so I got the guy to make me uh, a pair like this. So I'm sure that he, hopefully he makes these more often, but I actually had to ask him specifically to make this. Whereas the uh, Bolo um, is pretty standard. That's, I, I see these at every Dan Asando seminar that I go to. Um, I think it's important to have a training blade as a part of your arsenal because it helps you learn how to be edge aware. When you're always training with Kali sticks, sometimes it becomes really easy to ignore where the edge of your weapon is. The training blades allow you to actually pay attention to things like, which way is my edge facing? So like I said, I got a pair of those in that pocket. The next pocket I have, um, I keep several different Kali sticks in here. I'm gonna pull out all three kinds. There we go. So I keep, three different kinds of Kali sticks. So I keep the traditional rattan. If you study Filipino martial arts, you are, you are fully aware of these. You know these very, very well. Um, these uh, can be considered a weapon just in and of themselves, but this is what we use probably about 80% of the time we're training. We're using some kind of just rattan. Um, it's fast, it's durable, um, but you do have to replace it. What happens is as they get older, as they get beaten up, they start to kind of swell as, as like the rattan like pull, like pulls away from itself. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't splinter like wood does. It, it kind of swells and becomes softer. And as that happens, it becomes a less and less effective tool. And so very frustrated with constantly having to replace these, I sought some other kind of stick, which bring, brought me to the cold steel um, polypropylene stick that's that's designed to, if you look at it, it's got notches and everything just like a Kali stick does. Now, when they first come, they come, actually, I, I think I got it. I might have it over here. Yeah. They come with one, uh, 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 they come pretty long. They come like this long, like this. Um, but the Kali sticks that I use are this long, so I always just cut that notch off when I buy them so that my stick is the same size no matter which stick I'm grabbing. So I'm kind of used to using the same weapon. The only real downside of these sticks is that they are really, really heavy. And so some people who maybe have weak wrists, things like, like, like you know, these kind of like flourishing motions, 
um, sometimes that strains on people's wrist. I also have heard, uh, I've not had any complaints to me, but I've heard some people complain that these sticks destroy these sticks. So a lot of people don't want to train with somebody who has one of these cold steel sticks because they're so, they're so heavy that they just like shorten the lifespan of the rattan sticks, which all of that is corrected with the best stick that I've ever bought, which is these Balecki sticks by Ron Balecki. But yeah, but this, these, they come the right length. They, they show up the right uh, weight. Um, they're very similar in weight. This is maybe a little bit heavier, but it's made of that same polypropylene, basically like really durable plastic. These things are effectively indestructible. Once you buy yourself a pair of these Balecki sticks or those cold steel sticks, you're never gonna buy another stick. Um, and these will be all that you need. Uh, I keep all three in my bag because of different reasons. Uh, this is what I use about 90% of the time. Sometimes uh, I want to train with a heavier stick, kind of like weight training. And then other times I go to a place in which they don't allow sticks like this and they only will allow the rattan. So I have that as well. Plus my wife prefers to use the rattan over these. So anytime I train with her, I wanna make sure that I have some rattan sticks for her to train with. Like I said, I have a pair of each inside of that pocket. So moving on to the third pocket, I've got, I've got a pair of each that I'm showing you, once again, so the, there's more than just one of each. Um, I have a striking stick and a grappling stick. So these are padded foam sticks. They still hit pretty hard, but they allow for a bit more contact in sparring. I'm not a big fan of the kind of collie sparring where you get in full gear and go at it. I find that when people do that, if you watch them, they aren't doing collie as it was taught to us. They aren't being careful. They aren't managing the distance. They aren't defanging the snake because they don't feel anything. So they just stand in front of each other and just whack, 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 which you know, I guess is a thing, but in an actual stick fight, if you weren't wearing all that gear, you wouldn't do that. You'd be more cautious and more measured. What I like about these is because they still hurt, but they don't break your bones, but they still hurt. Um, it's kind of serves like a boxing glove where like it softens the blow, but it doesn't eliminate the blow. And I find that when people spar with these, they're far more cautious, they're far more respectful of the of when they get hit um, and they use their actual collie techniques better. There's also the uh, this like I call it a Lamenco stick. I think it's just made by uh, by Lamenco. I'm not really sure, but anyways. But this is kind of a similar thing to this, except for it's 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 hard on the inside. So these are flexible. So it so they'll break before I do. Whereas this is a little bit harder on the inside, but still has the padding. And we use this for any kind of grappling technique. So not only for if I'm sparring doing grappling, but when I'm training grappling, when you're choking somebody with a stick, like I'm grabbing this stick and I'm strangling somebody with it, um, this bites, this hurts really, really, really bad. And so, um, when we're training, uh, we'll use this stick instead for any kind of grappling training. It just lessens the amount of pain that it's causing. I think I've said this a lot in previous videos, but when you're sparring, you're not trying to hurt your partner. You're just trying to show your partner you could have hurt them. And so I like to have a, this kind of grappling stick as a part of the gear. That way we can work grappling, but I don't have to hurt my partner too much. And like I said, I have a pair of each of those inside of that pocket. Uh, so we have just one more pocket to go through because I don't actually use all of them. Shows you how awesome this bag is actually, is that I still have room to grow. All the stuff I'm carrying, I still could carry more. Uh, and this little pocket is where I keep some of the slightly uh, smaller knives and stuff. So let me pull this out. So first, like I already showed you, um, I keep the end that I cut off of this. Um, and I just use this as like a trainer coupaton so I can practice coupaton techniques, but it's not sharp like a coupaton is. So I don't hurt my partners while I'm training with it, but I still get the sense of holding something and driving something and getting the, the sense of the coupaton. So just because I cut this off doesn't mean that it wasn't valuable. Um, I keep this little trainer karambit. I actually don't like the karambit very much. I, I think it's kind of an impractical and generally stupid weapon. Um, I could do a whole video on that, so I won't go into it right now. Um, but because it is such a popular weapon, I have people who come to me who want to learn the karambit. So it is important that I have some sort of trainer to teach them with. Um, and so that's what this is. It's just a little trainer karambit 
so I can teach those techniques. Um, this was actually gifted to me. This is the kind of, um, I don't even know what they call this thing. It's like the wave, what is it? Let me look at it. This is the, uh, the Dart, Dart XTTK. So this is a kind of modern day karambit that doesn't have the hook to it. Um, it has still has the like finger retention and all that jazz. Um, and it has this little gimmick on it. I don't know if you can see it. it has this little thing here and this catches on your pants as you take it out. So it draws as you draw, which I think is, is a good thing. Uh, I generally still think it's kind of stupid. And once again, I could do an entire video on why I don't like this thing. And this is just a trainer. Um, I never keep the live blades in the same bag that I keep the training blade, so you'll never make that mistake. So that's a big, big, big no-no, is always keep your live blades literally somewhere else. Don't even bring them into the gym with you. Like only bring your training equipment, that way you will never accidentally pull a real blade on somebody. Um, but like I said, both of these I mostly have in the bag because I have students who are interested in it. I'll have clients come in and they wanna learn Karambit. They're big fans of Doug, Doug Marqueda and they bought this thing and they want me to teach them how to use it. And so it's important that I have it around so that I can help people learn what they're interested in learning. Uh, the last thing that I keep in here is a trainer of a uh, spring assisted blade. Um, once again, this is a trainer. We don't keep real knives in our training gear. Uh, this in particular is the, uh, is the Ronin gear do the little, the little makeup tutorial girls, they do that, right? These are important to have because this is not what we carry. So this is what we train with when we study Kali. I think these are good to train with because they work larger, more gross motions. Also as a teacher, they're larger knives so you can see what I'm doing a lot more clearly. But in reality, if you're living in, you know, like the modern world, you're probably not carrying around a giant knife like this, you're carrying around a small little spring assisted knife like this. And so I think it's very important that you have a trainer like this so that you can practice um, with a weapon that you actually carry. One of the biggest things that you'll see kind of as a theme throughout this whole thing is that if you carry a weapon, you should have an analog for that weapon. So if you carry a gun, you should have an analog for that gun so that you can train your martial arts with that gun. If you carry a knife, you wanna have a analog of that knife so that you can train with that knife. That's kind of the crucial aspect of Kali. Ultimately, Kali is just hitting somebody with a stick. It's really not that complicated or it's cutting someone with a knife. It's not that deep. These are weapons and a weapon it does its job for you. Whether you're good at it or you're bad at it, a knife will still cut somebody. The idea is to be as efficient as possible with those things, and the only way you can develop that efficiency is if you have realistic training gear. So that's the reason why I have so many different kinds of gear as opposed to just collie sticks, is it gives me a variety of ways to train this art and explore it in its completeness, in, its, in all of its complexity. Now, of course, if you made it to the end of this video, you're clearly enjoying the content, so be sure to hit the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button, and if you're in the Indianapolis area and you'd like to come train with me, all the information you need to do that is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. I also have Zoom classes available on Wednesdays for people who live too far away to train with me in person. Once again, the information you need to sign up for that is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with a School of Self-Defense Fight On.